What's going on everybody, it's Eric Ray with back here with some more Madden 20 gameplay news. Now last night EA did a stream and they also put out a blog on the new superstar abilities coming to Madden 20. I did a video on that last night so if you want to check that out it's in the description and in the comments below. This will change the way we play Madden. Now they also revealed some other information which I'm going to cover in this video here because I felt that this deserved its own video. This is going to go into specific gameplay changes that they revealed such as pass trajectories, uh, the velocity on the ball, the release timing of the quarterback when they throw the ball, signature throwing and running animation and things like that. Things that we've been wanting in the game and they're finally starting to move in that right direction and add some of these things in. So I'm going to cover the blog and then I'm going to cut to some clips of the stream where an actual developer goes more in depth on these changes. Now if you want to stay up to date on all the latest Madden 20 news going forward make sure to subscribe and turn on the bell notifications so that you don't miss any of these uploads. So the blog says to make stars feel like stars we didn't just stop with abilities we we're delivering signature and custom animations and presentation for our superstar players. Here they talk about throwing animations. A handful of the top NFL QBs will now have their signature throwing animations in game and we plan to continue to add more signature animations in the future. We've also standardized the timing of all throwing animations in the game so that not only does the quarterback matter but also the length of the pass. Short passes for all QBs will be quicker than deep passes. Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers will have the fastest release in the game followed closely by Browns quarterback Baker Mayfield and then followed by Patrick Mahomes. The timing from the start to the end of the passing animations for all QBs will scale down from the fastest passers based on their real world performance. Short passes will always be faster than deep passes for all quarterbacks, but deep passes from the elite players are still significantly faster than the deep passes by the lower rated players. While standardizing our passing animations, we tuned passing speeds and trajectory to get a little bit more air under the ball for all throw types. An important note here is that in order to get higher passing trajectory, the velocity of the passes had to decrease. This is a more authentic approach to passing trajectory in order to get the ball over those lurking linebackers and allow you to fit the ball into those, uh, you know, tighter zones. So... A welcome change that we've been begging for. They've addressed passing trajectories, at least taking a step in the right direction there, so that now you can fit the ball into tighter holes. You can get the ball over those lurking linebackers who tend to jump up and snatch the ball 10 yards in front of the pass. All very good to hear. Now they talk about the pump fake mechanic. It says you can now double tap a receiver's icon to pump fake to a specific receiver, or use this as a throw canceling mechanic if you want to pull the ball down late. A well-timed pump fake will be able to impact defensive players by forcing them to react, especially when equipped with the sleight of hand pump fake superstar abilities on players like Ben Roethlisberger. As a result, the medium pass mechanic has now returned to the press and release mechanic that was there prior to Madden 16. So, you can double tap a receiver's icon to pump fake him pump fake to him now you will probably fake out the lesser skilled defenders a little bit more often if you have one of maybe two or three quarterbacks that have a special pump fake superstar ability like Ben Roethlisberger which is something he's really good at in real life is pump faking you have a better chance of faking the defender out now if you want to throw the little touch pass like in years past it was double tapping the icon now you will have to press the icon down for like a slight moment and then release it that'll be the new touch pass so kind of going back to the way it was a few years ago you just kind of have to relearn that one but it shouldn't be too hard it also said they updated first down and sack celebrations to focus on you know making these players more authentic as well so now when you get a first down you can choose to do a signature celebration if your player has one so like Michael Thomas usually flexes after like every catch so you could probably do something like that with him for those big name pass rushers that usually have their own little sack dance when you get to the quarterback you can do their signature celebration as well so just more oh, more authenticity for these players it says here for running backs you'll notice that superstar players have their own set of special moves uh like including juke spins hurdles trucks and stiff arms and even branching broken tackles out of special moves we've even scratched the surface with signature running styles on a few players like cam newton julian edelman alvin kamara and richard sherman and we hope to expand on this in the future superstar pass rushers will have a powerful and unique pass rush animations that will have a heavy impact on the offensive game planning so just more so about animations to make these players play like their real life selves uh the high-end running backs are going to probably have access to these special jukes and spins whereas the lower rated guys might only have access to the regular jukes and spins whereas now in Madden every single player has access to all of them which they shouldn't uh you know a guy that's you know 70 overall shouldn't have access to the same moves that Alvin Kamara does they also added signature running styles for those few players they definitely need to expand on that a step in the right direction 
if they don't let that fall by the wayside and keep building that out in the next couple years, great. We need all these big name players to run, throw, and feel like themselves. But it's good that they were able to get some of these in the game. We just need them to build on it now. And that's always been the issue with EA. Same for the pass rushers. The big name pass rushers will have access to different pass rushing animations than the lesser skilled pass rushers, which means they'll be able to get to the QB a little bit quicker. Here it talks about immersion and quality polish. It says, heading into, heading into Madden 20, we made a team-wide commitment to drive core quality of the game with the goal of significantly reducing the number of immersion breakers our fans experience. And to back that up, we also, instead of waiting until the alpha phase to polish the game, we started doing polish weeks after every few weeks of production. Um, we also took a deep dive into finding places in the game where we could deliver more fun on a uh, user per minute basis by reducing the time that a player was just watching rather than playing. So what most games do is they kind of wait till the alpha stage, which is like the last few months before release to polish the game, fix the bugs. This doesn't really work for Madden too well because Madden has a lot of core gameplay issues and a lot of bugs. So they started polishing every few weeks throughout the year, throughout the entire development of the game. And they have found that the game is in a much better state than it was in previous years. This is why Mike and Clint have both said this is going to be a much more bug free game than we've had in the past because they took a different approach this year. Now, when they also streamline the game, they talk about things like players are going to line up quicker now like after no huddles and you know just after they break the the play call screen but the clock will tick the accelerated clock will tick the realistic amount of time that it takes these players to line up we just don't actually have to wait for it to happen so we have more action instead of just you know waiting having to sit there and watch them take forever to line up uh, the only concern with this is with no huddle I don't know how fast this is going to be for no huddle but that could cause problems for the defense in no huddle in terms of being able to set their defense up so that might be something we need to look out for that's the one concern I have there. Um, now, some other things they talk about here is like putting pressure on the QB. It says, putting pressure on the QB will be more impactful in Madden 20, especially based on the ratings and superstar abilities of pass rushers. You'll see great pass rushers have a greater impact on passing accuracy when applying pressure, and you'll see QBs who are great at throwing under pressure be more accurate. Um, so... You know, if you're putting pressure on a QB now, even if, like, if you're, especially if you're like Aaron Donald, maybe you're a couple yards away, you're not actually engaged in the sack yet, but you're going to be able to affect his passing accuracy because you're, you know, kind of bearing down on him. Whereas maybe a guy like Mahomes, you might affect his accuracy a little, but not as much as other QBs because he is still that good, especially on the run. He can still have decent accuracy. So it's going to, again, you know, be cat and mouse. The players you have on your team are very important this year. It says they also added game sacks. You can now, defenders can now seamlessly add on to tackling animations while sacking the QB so something cool to see uh, it says here that if players get knocked to the ground while the player is still alive they will now hurry to get up off the field and be more aware of the in-game situation De definitely a big thing there because we see players on the ground just clueless and unaware and madden all the time so now it, it sounds like they're going to get up quicker and get back involved in the play like think of things like fumbles instead of just laying on the ground and watching the ball roll around they'll actually make an effort to get to it sounds great there Here's a big one that people are always talking to me about. It says they put a limit on lurking linebackers. In addition to throw trajectory, they also made some changes with jumping interceptions over the middle versus passing plays. Primarily, only defensive backs will now be able to execute these athletic jumping interceptions in Madden 20, while linebackers and defensive linemen will not be able to make those acrobatic catches over the middle, unless they are one of the few linebackers that are considered a ball and air linebacker and equipped with a superstar ability. So think of somebody like Luke Keekley or Bobby Wagner who might have this. So the thing here is good change along with the pass trajectory. We won't see linebackers being able to snatch balls out of the air that they shouldn't be able to. Maybe the only the couple few linebackers that do it in real life will be able to do it. But I still would like to not see them do it as automatically as it has been in years past. Like if, if the ball is out of reach realistically, then they should not be able to unrealistically get to it. Um, also, they did make changes last year where you can sub defensive backs like safeties at linebacker and nickel packages. So if those guys can still get these animations, then we'll still kind of see the same problem. So I'm hoping that they thought all of this through, that the passing trajectories are still going to actually be worth the big changes here and also that some of these lower rated linebackers won't be able to perform like the super elite one so this one really remains to be seen how it's going to unfold but i'm liking that they're at least trying to address it uh, it just matters if they actually did address it or not 
It also talks about animation polish on blocking, catching, and tackling. We've put a significant amount of work towards improving the transitions into and out of interactions with focus on making them more seamless while also making the mechanics more responsive and user friendly. So all things we've complained about needed blocking, catching, and tackling. The animations were really clunky, sometimes overpowered, not seamless. They talked about fixing that again remains to be seen, but it's good that they're at least trying to do that. Some more quality tweaks, it said we removed auto straight from the game completely, both the functionality and the setting, which is good, uh, no good player uses that anyway, and it, it does more harm than good. Uh, it says we removed different game speeds from the game, mainly due to the amount of very specific bugs it caused for our animation system. That's another good thing to hear, we don't need different game speeds, we need one game speed across all modes, that makes it easier for them to tune the game, patch the game, clean the game up. When you have these different game speeds, certain animations work okay on one game speed, but on another game speed, they're complete mess. So I'm glad that they got rid of that, it's much easier to build, tune, and fix a game that's all kind of running on the same, you know, surface, I guess you could say. So that is a really good change. And it says Ball Hawk is now defaulted to on for all skill levels while it can still be toggled off. Having it off can lead to a number of frustration points for our users. So we decided to just have it on as default. So that's good to hear as well. So that's all that the blog covers. I'm now going to let you watch a couple of clips uh, from the stream where the developer goes in depth about some of these new animations. He drops a lot of really cool information. And that's going to be it. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Enjoy this next part and I will see you on the next video explain a little bit what you do here at EA and also you know kind of some of the things you've been working in this authenticity space uh, regarding uh, superstar X factors yeah so to uh, you know transition off of Mahomes and how we're making authentic uh, him authentic through the abilities that we have uh, we're also doing animations and, and how they throw and how they move um, and uh, paying off the authenticity outside of purely just uh, the ability feature itself um, so we have uh, some footage that we we've, we've put together now, to great. kind of pay I get, off I get everything. Excited about it! Yeah, this is stuff that you know the community always wants to see. Like, so what do we got going on right here? So right here, we're basically these are our motion capture athletes that we bring in uh, to our studio up in Canada in Vancouver at the Capture Lab, and we have multiple athletes come in to do these throwing animations because we want to have as many takes as we can possibly get. Um, this allows us to line people up. We can have them throw in different angles because uh, you, you, know, you have your, your 90 and your 45 degree angle passing directions. So this enables us to get as many takes as we can possibly get to roll through, look through and see like, oh yeah, actor two like totally nailed it. We're gonna order that one and let the other ones go away. Okay. So we're always finding ways to get as much variety and as much uh, authenticity and accuracy to the motions that we're trying to capture with our athletes. Got it. And I noticed that right here, it looks like we got, we got a couple of these, right, uh, that are, were being shown. It looks like they're on the Matrix or something like yeah. that. Uh, can you explain to the audience what's going on yeah, right there? Yeah, so this is Ant. This is our animation technology program we use in the studio here, and this is how we put together our animations for our gameplay. Uh, it also drives a lot of the, the logic behind what moves get picked based on the situation or what button you press on the controller. Uh, so right here with Mahomes, you know, you saw earlier with the motion capture, capture guys, uh, we bring it into the game and we clean it up and get all the noise that comes out from motion capture uh, with our animators here. And so for Mahomes' case, you see the kind of the kick out with his leg, that little yeah, baseball, sure. mm -hmm. you know, pitcher style, a little or orthodox from what your, your prototypical quarterback is. Uh, but that kind of fits his kind of backyard personality of, of play where he's just wide open, always looking to make plays, make exciting plays. Um, so the more uh, authenticity we can bring to how he plays on the field and how he walks on the field and uh, throws the ball and is throwing on the run, his no-look dead eye uh, that Clint touched on earlier where he's doing the no-look passes, like these are all things that help make Mahomes feel authentic and really pay um, off him being a cover. We have uh, some footage right here of Aaron Rodgers. Um, go ahead and walk us through this real quick. Yeah, it's the same thing. We line all our different guys up and we, we kind of teach, we show them videos of Aaron. And we're, you know, obviously you see the kind of the, the kick hip twist on there and a little bit of the the wrist breakage after they throw the ball that's all part of you know following his mannerisms his little hop steps as he runs and you know throws on the run these are all kind of consistent mannerisms that we've seen looking at nfl film and so we try to bring these into the studio and we have our athletes look at them and then we just take as many takes as we can get to try to nail it as, as I know much as we possibly can. one of the things I was always curious about is because, you know, you have to do the mocap first and then you got to do the ant. So it takes some time to get it in the game. How long does it take to do the um, ant? Uh, once we get the animations back and hooked up, uh, it's usually within a day or so we can get through and work with an engineer and make sure that there's a game state that fits 
where these animations need to play. Uh, like in this instance, the stuff that we've shown here, these are the passes. So um, in our logic, when we, you know, when you hit whatever pass icon you want to throw to, we'll go to the bank of the, the animations that we've cleaned up for that player and we tag them to a specific player so that nobody else gets them. Yeah. Um, and then we basically triangulate where you're gonna throw and we pick the animation that's yeah. gonna fit. So I, that another person game. that's very iconic in our game is Drew Brees. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look real quick here at Drew. Um, what do we got going on here? So Drew's got the uh, kind of the classic, you know, compact throwing. He's doing the adjusting his gear, you know, licking his fingers, all the Dan Marino age and all that stuff too. Kind of the old guys <laughs> like licking the football, which just seems disgusting to me. But, uh, the, but yeah, it's it's a way for us to continue to pay off these you know X Factor athletes in our game, uh, and also you know provide more authenticity for people that are fans of that team specifically.